Yo, 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 what's going on, you degenerates of the sports betting world? Welcome back to the Bust Your Bookie Show. Today is Thursday, May 23rd. We went 2-2 two and two yesterday. Our plays of the actual game sucked. We went 0-2 oh as far as the spread and the point total, but we did bang out again on our player props. We've been on a roll with the player props. You know, maybe if I just did those, we'd be undefeated, but that's not how things go. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. What we like to do is to try to give away 40 bucks. If you would like to qualify, it's very, very simple. All that you need to do, number one, you got to be a subscriber. So hit the subscribe button, hit it right now. Number two, comment below for no, give us the good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep going perfect for no, I will randomly cash up somebody 40 bucks. Now, before we get into the plays, leave a comment below also. Let me know what you guys think of the hat that I got going on. It's a little rainy outside. I thought I'd roll with it. I have a feeling it's going to give us some good vibes today. All right, let's take a look at game two here in the Eastern Conference Finals. Indiana at Boston. Boston currently favored by nine points. As far as injuries go, you got nothing new for Indiana, but the one that's interesting to look at is Przingis for Boston. He has been upgraded to probable. He's had a right calf strain listed as probable, and he's expected to be back perhaps in the next couple games. So keep an eye on that one. If he plays, obviously he's a difference maker. All right, let's talk about this game one. What a doozy this one was. 133 to 128. Boston won this game in overtime. We know the huge three from Jalen Brown to send it to overtime. What an incredible game. Let's talk about the box score here. For Indiana, they were led by Hallie Burton. Six threes, he had 25 points, but he was dog shit late. Some crucial turnovers. And he had just some, you know, weird plays at the end. Uh, some very questionable decision making by him. Siakam had 24, 12, and 7. Solid game for him. Turner with 23, 12 for Neemhard, 14 for Nesmith. Off the bench, those two guys have done their things all playoffs. Uh, McConnell with 13 and Toppin with 15. For Boston, they were led by Tatum with 36. Holiday had a huge game for his standards. He had 28, 26 for Brown, 15 for White, and Horford gave them 15 as well. Not much off the bench. You got eight from Pritchard, five from Cornett. All right. Our line here, as I mentioned, is Boston favored by nine. I believe it was 10 in game one. We know that we covered in that one, and we're going to continue to roll here with Indiana. Despite this heartbreak and loss, at the end of the day, they can look at themselves and say, we belong in this series. Uh, I do think that this game, this series is going to go seven games, and I think this is another close game. Looking at some shooting percentages, you know, neither team shot it great. And we'll talk about the point total here shortly. Uh, but for Indiana, Neemhard with only 12, you know, Hallie Burton did have a big game in the first half, especially with 25, but he kind of cooled down in the second half. So I expect him to do better. Uh, end of the day, you know, there was not a whole lot of things to go wrong for Boston as far as their starters go. All five of their starters in double figures. Horford played solid. You know, he was five for 15. He had 15 points. Um, you know, Derek White can play a little bit better, but that's a huge game for Drew Holiday. 10 for 16, and he played 48 minutes. You know, all their starters played a lot of minutes uh, for Boston. They're just not as deep of a team as Indiana. I like the way that Indiana moves the ball offensively. You know, they, they don't hold the ball a lot. Yeah, they don't have like a go-to star, which hurts them late in the game where they might lose some close ones. But as far as covering, they are good at covering because they don't hold the ball. They're moving it. They're hitting the open guy. The ball does not stick with them. And I like their offensive pace. So we are going to roll with Indiana. We're going to take the points. Give us Indiana plus nine here as our first play of the day. All right, let's talk about this point total, 224 and a half. It opened up in the first game at 223. And we know it obviously went over. We were on the wrong side. I'll admit about that one. Uh, but 223, it's only gone up a point and a half here. And yes, we know it went over by a ton, especially due to overtime. But even in regulation, 
this score was a total of 234 going over by 11 points. It's only adjusted by one point, one and a half points. And as I mentioned, neither of these teams shot the ball great, especially from three. Boston, 33.3%. I can expect them to shoot better. Jalen Brown was only one for four. Obviously, it was the big one. Horford was three for 12 from three. Tatum, two for eight. Uh, you know, Derek White was three for eight. That's okay. The only outlier really was Drew Holiday. He was four for eight. But 15 for 45 is not very good for this Boston team. They typically shoot it better. Uh, same thing with Indiana. Uh, there is room for improvement with their shooting. Nesmith was one for five. Siakam, 0 for two. Uh, the only one that shot it pretty good from three was Halliburton, and he was 6 for 14. Shepard off the bench, 0 for 3. So I expect uh, better shooting performances in general. Um, the pace of play is going to be there. We've seen both of these teams, even in the regular season, really put up a lot of points. I think Boston put up like 150 in one of the games. So we know the pace is going to be there from both these teams. There's room for improvement to shoot on both sides. They went over this number by, uh, you know, like I said, in game one, 234. So they went over it by about 10 points in game one already, and they haven't really adjusted it as much as I thought they would have. So we are going to continue to uh, ride this scoring wave between these two teams. Give us the over 224.5 in the Indiana-Boston game as our second play of the day. All right, like I said, we've been banging some pay player props. Let's keep banging them today. First one we're going to look at is going to be Al Horford. Now, Horford did screw us uh, last game. I'll admit that, guys. He shot a lot of shots, and he hit, uh, you know, whatever we were on there. We did not win with his bet. I think it was uh, points plus rebounds. Anyways, what we're looking at today, though, is a different line. We're looking at his steals line. It's just 0.5. Can Al Horford get a steal? Well, if you look at the last five games, he's gone under a steal in four out of five. And looking at on the season, he only averages 0. 0.6. It's about 50-50. He's gone under it 34 out of 65 times, under it 52.3%. Um, so on the season, he's typically under. Over the last five, he's typically under. So I like it what I see from those angles. And then as far as this opponent goes, in the 11 games that he's played over the last 11, he's gone under it 54.5% of the time, 6 out of 11. That's not a huge number. But as far as most recently goes, you know, Al Horford's an old dude, right? I mean, the dude cannot move his feet very well at this point of his career. I mean, he's always kind of just been a spot-up shooter. But also, from as far as a situation matchup-wise goes, the guys that he's going to be guarding, Turner, Toppin sometimes, those guys are pretty much spot-up shooters uh, or they're guys that finish at the rim with a dunk. They're not back-to-the-basket guys where that's where you'd see a big sometimes get a steal on a strip, uh, a loose ball that just kind of falls his way because he's guarding a big on there. So it just as far as a situational uh, matchup goes, it's just not a very good opportunity for him to get a steal. And so I do like this under one steal for Al Horford as our first player prop of the day. All right. And before we move on to the second player prop, we will tell you what the juice is on Al Horford still only minus 115. So we're getting really good odds there. That's our first player prop only minus 115 Al Horford under one steal. All right, our second player prop here, we're looking at Peyton Pritchard, and we're looking at his turnover line. Same type of number, we're looking at just one turnover, 0.5. Will he have a turnover or not? Well, let's talk about over the last, uh, well, we'll talk about head-to-head -head first. In the last 10 times that he has played Indiana, he's gone under a turnover 9 out of 10 times. For you mathematicians out there, yes, that is 90%. He's hit under this turnover line over the last let's say uh, let's look at the last five games only two turnovers over the last five games he has not had a turnover over the last two games only averaging 0.4 over the last five 
this is not a guy that turns over the ball a whole lot. All right. He knows his role on the season. It's close to 50, 50. He averages 0.7 turnovers per game. He's gone under it 39 out of 82 games. Again, you're close to 50, 50 on the season, but I like this situation for him as well because of the matchup. Um, as I mentioned, head to head, he's gone under nine out of 10, only averaging 0.1 turnovers against this opponent. But Tyrese Halliburton is not really a dog on defense, okay? Sure, I get a little bit worried about McConnell when he's pressuring the ball. He's a little bit more active. But Peyton Pritchard really takes pride in taking care of the ball. This is a guy that knocks down shots. When he does drive, he doesn't get in a rush, all right? He doesn't try to force things. And, you know, if he does get in the paint, he often does kind of the Steve Nash dribble and just keeps his dribble alive. So I like the under one turnover here. He's not turned the ball over uh, in most of these playoff games. And I like this matchup as far as when you look at the overall ball pressure that Indiana does and the ability for Pritchard to just kind of keep the ball on a string, keep that ball alive and take care of the ball. So give us under 0.5 turnovers for Peyton Pritchard as our fourth and final play of the day. That's going to wrap it up for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you would like to qualify for the giveaway, number one, subscribe to the channel. you got to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below. Four and oh, you give us the good vibes. My hat's going to give us the good vibes, and we need your good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookies ass. We went two and two yesterday. Let's go for the sweep today.